I could go back to the point that you were talking about vendor locking when it comes to choosing the, the vendor. Another thing is that uh, application can come and go. They can run wherever they want. The most valuable asset of companies they do have is their data. Uh, but the fact is that clouds, they have data gravity. So how do you look at that problem so that uh, once again, it doesn't matter which cloud vendor you choose. Actually, once you get logged in, you get logged in so that folks can easily, you know, if they change their mind or you know, whatever business requirements are, they can move around very easily. Also, that's just an excellent point. And it's, it's, it's one of the pain points in, you know, managing that infrastructure or that general vendor lock in risk. It's not only about infrastructure, as you mentioned, also some data service vendors, uh, they turned out to be, let's say, creating a, a lock in. Um, so any vendor lock-in, whether it is the infrastructure that gave you a lot of discount in the early days and now taking away and removing those discounts gradually, that would be one motivation to you know, um, have an alternative presence so that you can split your workloads and you know, have uh, you know, an alternative uh, to uh, you know, a, a greedy negotiation partner, I'd say. But if you look at the at the data layer, for example, if you buy into an infrastructure specific vendor, well, then you not only have the problem that you may have to buy a license, but it's also you have the problem you cannot move into another territory. So if you are if you start in Europe or in the US, uh, let's say on AWS, and then you move to Asia, which was one of my favorite uh, scenarios because it, it, it's so it, it creates the impossible situation that customers in Asia, uh, that, they, that they will have to use, let's say, AliCloud or any other uh, infrastructure provider that's close, closer to the government. And if you then do not have the technical ability to move your workload, uh, you're not making any business there. And that would be you know, a tremendous damage to, uh, to the evolution of a business. So in that case, how can you leverage, uh, how can you mitigate that risk and we believe that op that any application developer platform should, you know, you, you never you never get around a login, but the login should be against open source based APIs. We've recently had some some significant, I would say, damage to that open source um, ideology after some of the open source vendors. Uh, started to migrate to a non-open source license. The SSPL license would be one of the examples. I mean, there's arguments uh, behind that too. But in general, it, it is a safer path to go for such an open source technology because even in the SSPL event, alternatives show up at some point so that you'll have more flexibility to move to move on. For example, our platform products are basically automation. So if, if your applications tie to Postgres or they tie to, to Redis, they tie to an open source product. That the fact that we do wrap it with automation that makes it easier to consume is not per se a login. You can use any other technology that automates the lifecycle of Redis and Postgres, and you'd still be able to move your workload. And that's what I mean. It's, it's, you need to understand that certain logins are much more problematic than others. And that tying to open standards is one way to mitigate it. Now, regardless whether which products you choose to get there, but uh, tying your systems and, and forming contracts with those open standards is one of the golden rules, I'd say.